Hello and welcome to our second um, Exeter Tehran conversation on philosophy with myself, Sajad Rizvi, and my colleague, Mohsen Fez Bakhsh in Tehran. Uh, today we will be talking about the philosophy of, of science. Um, and before I, I hand it to Mohsen to introduce our guest today, uh, let me just say that um, as a non-philosopher, when I think of philosophy of science, I usually think of this whole question of what do we mean by science? and the pursuit of, of knowledge and holistic knowledge as a whole, often thinks of things such as the scientific method and uh, you know, famously things like the falsifiability um, approach of someone like Karl Popper um, and, and figures from the 20th century such as that. And so one of the questions obviously we want to think about is um, what is, is different or, or similar in the philosophy of science um, as it is practiced in Iran? And can we bring in some interesting other alternative approaches which can actually enrich our wider conversation of how we think of a philosophy of science more generally. Um, so without further ado, I will pass it to Mohsen Fezbach, who will introduce our um, guest today, Professor Ibrahim Azadegan, and then we will uh, begin our conversation. Uh, thank you, Sajjad. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, today we'll talk about philosophy of science in Iran with uh, Ibrahim Azad, Professor Ibrahim Azadegan, who is an associate professor of philosophy of science in the Department of Philosophy of Science at uh, Sharif University of Technology. He is also a resident, resident researcher at School of Analytic Philosophy in IPM. Uh, and he has held a PhD in analytic philosophy uh, from IPM, from the same institute. And, uh, he is also uh, the Dean of the Department of uh, Philosophy of Science in Sharif Institute of Technology. He has published uh, many articles uh, on the intersection between philosophy of science and philosophy of religion. Uh, and now, here it is. And thank you, Ibrahim, for uh, accepting the invitation. Thank you very much for inviting me for this meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, Wasson, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I, I will start. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah. yeah uh, the, the previous session we were we were talking about a a, a topic which was uh, has had a long long standing history in in Iranian aca academy in in its general sense, but today we are uh, that is Islamic philosophy. But today we are, we are, we will talking about we will be talking about. Uh, a, a discipline which is not uh, which is less than three decades that we we have it uh, in the uh, in the Iranian academy. Uh, I think it is less than three decades that we have philosophy of science as a distinct discipline in Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, and also for a long time there was just one department in Iran that is the department in Sharif University of Technology. Um, so it would be interesting to know. Uh, what was the main purposes of the founders of such discipline to uh, to distinguish it from other uh, other philosophy departments to work on it specifically uh, and and why is it why, why in Sharif University of Technology because we uh, th th there was no department there was no humanities department in, at uh, whatsoever at Sharif uh, but. Uh, we, I think it was in 1994 that Sharif University of Technology uh, founded the Department of Philosophy of Science. So what do you think, Ibrahim? Uh, let, let me talk about, uh, about myself uh, and uh, the way that I pursue toward philosophy of science. And then um, I will explain your question during this, uh, this path. Uh, when I was student in electrical engineering in Sharif University, uh, you know that uh, in Iran every day we have uh, some examination for all the students to come to universities and the best mathematical, in, uh, mathematical uh, students come to Sharif University for uh, their higher education and electrical engineering and physics and 
uh, other department for mechanic and computer science in Sharif University observe some uh, best students from all over parts of Iran in Sharif. Uh, when we talk with uh, other students in our gathering in Sharif University, uh, many of us uh, thought that uh, we, uh, we lost our way in coming to Sharif University of Technology because uh, we, we, we really uh, do not like to pursue our career in an academic career as engineer. Uh, and uh, without that, uh, why we are here in Sharif University? And we, are, we uh, engage with lots of uh, big questions about ourselves, about our uh, society, about our politics in, in Iran, and many other uh, big questions that uh, we cannot find any good answer about them in uh, courses about engineering. So uh, it is not only me, uh, there are many other students in Sharif University like me. And uh, about 25 years ago, uh, Dr. Golshani, who was a, a physician, he, uh, physicist, he uh, tries to establish this department in Sharif University. Uh, his, his mind was that, on that moment, was that to answer some students and professors questions regarding the uh, philosophical and metaphysical aspect of science, especially physics. But uh, this narrow idea widened two years in, in Sharif University. And now um, our aim is not only to um, study philosophy of physics in Sharif uh, or philosophy of general philosophy of science, but we widen our area uh, in Sharif University to, uh, of course, our main study, our, our main courses are um, focused on philosophy of science, but uh, our, we get free our students to pursue their uh, interest in philosoph philosophical interest. For example, uh, we have courses as, on Kant, on ethics, on philosophy of mind, on uh, philosophy of cognitive science, analytic philosophy, continental philosophy, rights, skills rights, uh, many different courses you can find in uh, our departments that we provide for to our students to to find their way. The, the, you know, the, the, they many of them the, have a BS degree in physics, in engineering, and they come to our department to find their uh, philosophical questions, answers for for their philosophical questions, and uh, we provide them some good courses on, on, philosophy, on Islamic philosophy also, on science and religion, and many different uh, area of philosophy we uh, cover in our university, in our department now. This is the aim of uh, our uh, department and the goal that we pursue in our, in our department in Sharif University of Technology. In, in one word, to, to provide uh, the last engineers some <laughs> philosophy. So uh, I, I had also the same experience in University of Tehran. I, I, I was a mechanical engineer <laughs> and then <laughs> shifted to philosophy in University of Tehran. But, yeah. uh, but speaking of that, I think um, what, uh, we have to think about this, uh, whether, whether, whether uh, it is suitable to um, to gather uh, engineers or to gather natural scientists to pursue their uh, work on, on, on philosophy or philosophy of science. And if, if they need some, some uh, other courses on philosophy in general, 
or not. I think uh, this is something which is debated in uh, about Sharif in, in specific because uh, because uh, for the most part there are uh, Sharif students, Sharif students who were uh, who were studying engineering uh, at their bachelor level to pursue philosophy of science in, in master or uh, and PhD. Um, it, 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 is there any problem with this or what do you think about this? Yeah, uh, there is really there is a difficulty for us uh, in Sharif University. This, uh, our difficulty is that uh, uh, our students, uh, for example, uh, read some books of, in, in Iran, you know, there are many published many books in on philosophy every year and uh, because uh, have many interests in philosophy uh, they read for example Nietzsche some of them they read Hegel some Kant some uh, analytic philosophy uh, they, they participated in some classes over there in uh, Hekmat Institute in IPM uh, elsewhere and so they have some uh, disjoint ideas about philosophy. Uh, it is very difficult for them to, um, for us to uh, give them a, a very uh, programmed and uh, goal-oriented uh, courses. But uh, and uh, another problem for us to, to manage our department is that um, most of our students do not have enough uh, education in philosophy. And it is difficult to, for, for us to uh, educate them in, in our first courses, uh, some philosophy courses. It's very difficult. But uh, we did it for 25 years, and uh, uh, and many of our uh, graduated students now are professors in IPM in Tehran and in other universities now, and uh, in, of course, in uh, as I know, uh, they are leaving and pursue their philosophical career in academia and elsewhere in the world. So uh, we, of course, it, is, it was difficult, but uh, we were successful. Can I ask a, if you yeah can I ask a follow up which um, mm. is um, I mean in a sense to kind of really get to grips with this um, what um, how how would you define philosophy of science um, because um, you know part of it could be like the philosophical foundations of you know the scientific disciplines such as physics such as biology like for example our department in Exeter. Uh, we don't have a philosophy department, we have a philosophy, sociology, and anthropology department. But the philosophers are primary philosophers of biology and of things like transhumanism and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously, those working in philosophy of, of biology, the issues around, uh, you know, the role of humans within the wider biological um, context or evolution, etc., comes up a lot. And then, of course, you can look at philosophy of science as... Um, a metaphysical kind of explanation of what science is and what method is, right? So sometimes it's a question of, well, we need philosophy of science because we need to have some sort of common methodology which we can apply across the board, you know, whether it's in different branches of philosophy and study of science and logic, etc. So, you know, how, how would you define philosophy of science? Okay. Uh... We define it in our department in, in these two aspects. One is general philosophy of science. For example, um, the, the questions about causation, the question about explanation, uh, that is typical in uh, philosophy of science. And uh, so we have two courses on philosophy of science one and two that uh, we study Popper, for example, Van Frossen and uh, uh, Hempel and many uh, happened and, and, and many other uh, big name in philosophy of science. So uh, we have general philosophy of science in our department as defined in everywhere. But um, according to our need in uh, Tehran and in Sharif University, uh, 
um, we cannot focus uh, just on general philosophy of science. Uh, as I said, uh, our students and also ourselves, uh, the professors here, have different uh, ideas and different concerns. We cannot only focus on general philosophy of science. We have many problems in our society. We have the problem of brain drain in Sharif University, and we cannot ignore it and only focus on the uh, theory of explanation. You know, uh, we, we, we have to engage in the, the problem that we face every day in, uh, in the street in Tehran. So our, uh, we focus on, for example, uh, I myself must, uh, teach uh, some courses on engineering ethics uh, to uh, push our students to recognize their social responsibility about our country, about our nation. Uh, they, I, I, I try to, uh, to remember them that uh, we reach this point, they reach this point of the study uh, by help of many others. And so they have social responsibility. So uh, engineering ethics, business ethics is the courses that we uh, provide in for our university. Uh, so the, and another problem is that many other department of philosophy in Tehran are not as good as uh, philosophy departments in, for example, UK. So it is also important for us to teach our students good philosophy. So uh, we, of course, our main focus is our general philosophy of science and general question of philosophy of science, but um, we should have concern about our situation in Iran. So um, from that perspective, then, it seems a lot of um, the interaction between philosophy and these particular, um, uh, the way in which we, uh, you know, people practice science and technology. It seems yeah. to be a lot of it's about ethics then, right? Yeah. The, perhaps we can say that it is not the Department of Philosophy of Science, but the Department of Philosophy for Scientists. Right. Yes, I understand. Um, uh, can I can I get ask move on to the next question, um, uh, and uh, and then of course Mohsen will continue as well. By the way, um, as I mentioned before, there will be time for others to ask questions. We we will kind of try and run through our main questions in the first forty minutes or so, and then we'll. Well, everyone will have an opportunity to ask, don't worry. Um, so uh, I guess my question, which is perhaps a bit of a prov provocative question, is, is there such a thing as Islamic philosophy of science? Uh, um, thank you for your question. <laughs> um, it, it is very difficult to attach the word Islamic to uh, to everything, it is uh, we, we should do it with many qualifications. Um, perhaps for for several people in Iran, you you heard from me in media in Iran every day that uh, they uh, attach this word to everything. But uh, I hesitate to to do this, and um, I think that. Uh, if we generally speaking, we, we, as a Muslim and as some scientists or philosopher live in an Islamic world and Islamic country, we have some Islamic backgrounds, we have some Islamic intuitions, and we have some perhaps uh, some ethical viewpoint from Islam, uh, and all of them will uh, come to our philosophy and uh, perhaps uh, involuntarily. Um, and also, uh, if we, this is my idea, if we uh, pursue analytic or continental philosophy as 
it uh, pursue in Western universities. After that, we um, if we have good tools of analytical continental philosophy in our hand, then we can um, we can uh, come come back to our history and, for example, look at Mullah Sadra, look at Ghazali, Avicenna, and others, and take the idea ideas in uh, recent debates in philosophy of analytic philosophy or continental philosophy as well. Uh, this, this, this is my main idea that uh, we have good and rich background in, in philosophical thoughts in Iran, of course we have, but uh, uh, they are not well cooked. And so uh, with the tools, with, especially with analytic philosophy tools, we can, uh, so, such, such a work has been done by Plantinga or Wilhelm Alstone in, in the philosophy of religion, for example. You, you can see that they back to uh, Thomas Aquinas, to Augustine and others in, in the West and uh, take them to uh, recent philosophical debates. This is my idea that if we want to successful um, in uh, showing our rich history and deep background, uh, this is the way that we ought to go to, towards. But, but I guess what I'm trying to ask is something a bit more than that. Um, in the sense that um, I'm not just saying that you kind of bring, um, I guess, Ang Anglo-American or European philosophy of science into conversation with the history of philosophy in Islam, you know, you said Ibn Sina, Mullah Sadr, et cetera, but rather you actually produce something new. Um, I mean, you mentioned people like Plantinga, et cetera, and, and while some of them are very much within their tradition, for example, Alistair McIntyre is very much deeply a, a Thomist, um, many other contemporary Christian philosophers um, are not necessarily going back to a medieval scholastic tradition. So I'm thinking of like colleagues of mine um, who work on philosophy of biology, who are Christians, but for them, it's a question of seeing, um, you know, what is it about one's faith or ethical commitments that one can use to inform the way in which we understand science as such, right? And then particular kinds of issues around, you know, the age of the cosmos, you know, how do we understand the cosmos, the, uh, life on the cosmos, biology, and so forth. So I guess what I'm saying is that is, it's not just a question of putting philosophy with history of philosophy, but trying to put philosophy with actual philosophy as well, if you see what I mean, All right? So how, I mean, how, how do we do that? Maybe it's a very difficult and unfair question to ask, but I think it's, it's one which a lot of people will have in their mind. Yeah. Uh... But I, I, I want to tell you example. Example. Uh, recently, I uh, work on a paper on, on open theism, and um, I, I very much like the ideas in open theism, uh, William Hasker and others. And uh, I, I thought that I think that uh, the idea about God can solve many. Uh, so, Philosoph or philosophical problems about the problem of evil, about uh, relation, our relationship with God, and, and um, about the form of freedom and uh, God's foreknowledge and some uh, ma major problems in philosophy. Uh, so I uh, engage myself in, in, in this uh, type of thought. But um, when, when I look at the debate uh, between Azali and Avicenna uh, in uh, Tahafat al Philosopher, uh, I found that uh, some, not similar, but uh, to some extent similar ideas can be found in uh, Al Ghazali's ideas, and uh, which you know that many many Islamic philosophers in, in Iran ignore Ghazali and 
Takhtarazi as uh, Kalami. And, uh, but we, we, I found that uh, he has very good intuition in this idea. So I, I uh, bring uh, al Ghazali's ideas to my paper and uh, it will be published in Thesis Studies. Um, so I, I, I did, my idea is that, that uh, if we engage ourselves truly to recent problems in philosophy, as you mentioned, uh, then uh, involuntarily perhaps our, our background can come and uh, our Islamic background, our Shiite background in Iran uh, can come to our philosophy. So uh, perhaps uh, you, you didn't know, we uh, oblige our PhD student uh, in order to defend their thesis to publish one uh, paper in national journals. Uh, th that was very difficult for our students. But uh, this, this year, in 2020, in our small department, we have published, for example, about 15 papers and uh, in very good journals. This, uh, this was a part of our education. That's uh, our students know how to engage internationally, how to um, say the words in, uh, in an international way in an, to uh, some um, Anglo-American way of writing that yesterday you, you have talk, talked about. It. Yeah, it's very I mean, important for us. obviously that, that uh, there's a whole kind of question about what sort of biases are inherent within that. and. Um, I, I see a lot of these articles. I get asked to, uh, you know, peer review plenty of articles in comparative philosophy and others, um, and, and you see there's a range uh, of things which come in. Um, I, I guess we can we can maybe come back to this later, but I think Mohsen, uh, you have further questions, so we can. Yeah. Take I, I think we have been pacing back and forth uh, from uh, from uh, exploring the relation between uh, the philosophy of science in Iran and philosophy of science abroad, which you mentioned, Ibrahim, that we, you have, you, you are working, uh, you are uh, working in publishing, uh, in publishing uh, peer-reviewed, peer-reviewed article, articles in peer-reviewed journals, uh, but, uh, and, and fr from, from these two, to, uh, in a sense, domestication, for example, of, uh, of philosophy of science in Iran, that you teach business ethics, etc., uh, in, uh, in, in your department. Um, I, I, I want to explore, uh, uh, my, my, my question is, uh, how do you think the, the philosophy of science in Iran can be related to uh, the global philosophy of science or philosophy of science abroad? Um, you, you said that you work with, uh, with concrete problems in Iran. For example, you teach business ethics. I think there is some other, uh, some other uh, intuitions or some other ideas about domestifying, if I, if I'm using the correct word, uh, the uh, domestication for or, or uh, the 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 philosophy of science. Um, I, um, I I'm wondering if you think uh, there is a relation between the the Iranian philosophy of science. Is there any re Iranian philosophy of science, and what is its meaning, and how it, how is it related to the uh, philosophy of science abroad? Um, I, I, really, I don't think that we have Islamic or Iranian philosophy of science, but we have a philosopher of science or philosophers that uh, live in Iran or concern Ir Iranian uh, problems. We have, for example, problem about, uh, of course, we have problem about uh, human rights in Iran. And I think that uh, many of our students every day engage in, in the problem of, for example, human rights or women rights in Iran. So um, it, is, it is very important for them to, uh, when they come to my course on ethics, when they come to, come to others course on, for example, uh, Western philosophy, 
when they come to uh, courses of philosophy of technology, uh, to all of them, they, they, they want to also to Islamic philosophy, they all, in, in all of them, they want to pursue and uh, find an answer to their uh, original questions that uh, uh, related in, in their problem in our society. For example, uh, uh, when we talk about, uh, for, for, for example, the nature of God in philosophy of religion courses, uh, if we introduce a patriarchal God, a, 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 such a dictator who uh, never take any attention to our pains, our sufferings, and so, uh, and this concept of God that is very normal in the department of philosophy of religion in, in the world uh, is not a God that we, um, we can accept in our, in our society. For example, when, when, when I talked last term uh, about uh, feminist conception of God, or open theistic conception of God, uh, many of our students uh, can find their answer to um, changing their idea about God. Uh, for example, so it is very important that um, we can find our current answers or in, in our society through our philosophical thinking. So, uh, do, do, do students and pardon, do um, uh, scholars and students of philosophy of science uh, contribute to the problem, global problems in philosophy of science in the sense you, in the case you, you say that uh, all of them are engaging with the local problems? Yeah, well, but uh, yeah, there, there, there are different students. We, we have different students. Some of our students work only on philosophy of physics. For example, uh, last month, uh, we, pub we published three papers on philosophy of science, philosophy of physics, especially philosophy of physics. Or another, one of other my students work on for example, Williamson on the nature of knowledge or the nature of know-how, for example. This is the completely analytic philosophy paper and no concern about our society. But many of them have social and political concerns and when they engage in our, in our class, uh, they, they question about that. Because there are many fields in philosophy which is pursued in the Department of Philosophy of Science, not only yes. philosophy of science, or? As I, as I told you, uh, we have uh, many smart students that they, they have difficulties and concern about their situation in, in uh, about their relation with the state, about the, the nature of justice, about, uh, for example, the uh, women rights, human rights, and many other questions like this. So, um, and, and these are the live questions in, in our society now. So we cannot ignore it in our department. Of course, we have some courses in general philosophy of science and some, some of our students can pursue this. So in a sense, it's almost as if, um, you know, uh, philosophy of science is a, a convenient way for you to smuggle in wider philosophical questions uh, for you and your students to engage with. with. I mean, I think that's perfectly reasonable because that happens in many places. Um, you know, sometimes you have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, for example, of colleagues of mine at Imperial College. Imperial is very much, a, you know, a science and engineering place, but you have people who do philosophy and history of science, uh, and they use that as a way of getting more properly into history and into philosophy. So it's not, it's not unusual to see that happen. Uh, uh, 
that, that's that, that's good. Um, you know, it, 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 it is like like the, the way that we uh, we have gone uh, through these twenty five years. Not not only we decide from above when we where we should go, but uh, we ourselves together with our students, with teachers, with uh, our society go this way. Uh, Mosin, should we have one last question and then we can open it up? Uh, like you know, I think, I think we uh, want to ask about current and future plans. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. If if you can tell me, Ibrahim, not not only in the in the Sharif department, but also in philosophy of science in general in Iran, what is the current and future projects in philosophy of science which is pursued now? Okay, uh, we have five main uh, branches of research in our department. One of them, and uh, and also I, as I know generally in uh, philosophy of science in Iran. Uh, one of them is uh, that is, uh, is the relation between science and religion. Um, as you know, Iran, uh, Iran is culturally a religious uh, society. S um, and the, the, the problems of, for example, evolution, the problem of uh, divine action in the world, the problem of fine tuning, and uh, also many other problems that is uh, in the debate between science and religion is alive in Iran. And, um, we, uh, we have every semester a course on that and uh, we, pair, we uh, push our students to um, pursue these uh, questions and you know, research about these questions. The other uh, important area of research in our department uh, is in philosophy of mind and philosophy of cognitive science. Um, we have questions about, for example, um, mind-body problems, and uh, we have good research on normativity of mind, on, uh, for example, MacDowell's idea on normativity of mind, and, uh, and also on uh, the relation um, between cognitive science and uh, religious ideas and, uh, for example, these, these concerns. Uh, and the other branch that we study is general philosophy of science and philosophy of physics and biology, as I, as I said. Um, the fourth branch is ethics, uh, because ethics is very important for our students in Sharif University, for engineering students, um, and uh, as I as I said, we want to uh, we want them. You know, engineering has been in the world in 300 years ago for people to have the better life and uh, to enrich the life of people. This is the aim of engineering. But if engineering engineers pursue money, pursue their own interest, uh, they are going away of their uh, main goal of engineering. So it's very important to at least uh, teach students, some uh, Sharif University students and engineers, some, some courses on ethics um, to understand the value of humanity and to understand their responsibility to their society. Um, and the last area is philosophy of religion in our department and because there are many questions about the nature of God and uh, the new ideas about God and uh, we have no, no choice to uh, have research about this, these problems. So in these five areas we work in our department. As I told you, our department name is philosophy of science, but this is the, the philosophy department for scientists and engineers. Uh, I, uh, Boston, do you have anything further or shall we open it up? Uh, no, I think we can move to uh, participants if they have um, any questions. I, I actually have a question, but I'm gonna leave it till later because again, it's a big provocation. So we'll come back to it, but I know, um, Mansouri had a question. 
So, Mansura, if you want to go ahead and ask, uh, you can unmute yourself. Yes. Um, um, thank you for the <coughs> possi possibility to um, have the time. Um, I have indeed two questions. Uh, we already spoke about is a possible Islamic philosophy of science, uh, and your answer I found very, um, very, um, very good indeed because uh, it is the background we bring with uh, ourselves to the research um, determine somehow the way or the goal we are going to. But my question concerns the situation in Hosa. Is there interest in Hosa for um, philosophy of science in the modern uh, term? Sometimes I, um, I listen to the lessons uh, which are given in Hosa. There are plenty of on the internet, thank, thank God. Um, but, uh, but I feel that they are fixed in time. They have a very simplistic idea of physics, astronomy, or psychology. And uh, it is somehow uh, shocking for me that they have, I mean, uh, our philosophy is very um, tightly linked with uh, science. And if you have such a simplistic um, idea of uh, the various sciences, so uh, our philosophy perhaps cannot um, cannot develop in uh, in a in an interesting way. So that's the first question. My second question also concerns uh, what you said about the situating uh, the philosophy in the. So society you are living it and acting it as a professor um, there is a huge interest in Iran it is really really something phenomenal I mean uh, it is something really Iranian I think I, I haven't seen it uh, anywhere till now a anywhere else till now um, how do you see the situation I mean we translate many books also the secondary literature there are plenty of uh, translations, but are we really successful in uh, somehow to um, to integrate them into our thought or into our culture? Um, how do you see the this uh, aspect? Thank you very much for your questions. The first question is that. Uh, about Jose or uh, seminary in Iran, um, really there are some smart and some groups in Jose, uh, some smart people that uh, that they they pursue modern philosophical uh, thoughts and concerns. Uh, for example, uh, you can see in uh, Ayatollah Mesbah's uh, Jose. Uh, a huge department of translation and some uh, some very good uh, philosophers uh, that uh, Ayatollah Mesko supports them to go to, for example, McGill to U U.S. and they come back. They they understand philosophy well, but uh, in in the society that they engage in, in that uh, uh, in that they, they, in their department uh, they cannot develop well their their ideas but um, uh, it is not that they totally uh, freezing for 400 years ago on Mullah Sadra no, no I, I, I think that uh, we can find uh, particular persons in particular space that uh, they, they study philosophy well, really well in Jose. And uh, uh, it is, I, I hope uh, for our Jose to, uh, uh, to be developed philosophically. Uh, one of uh, the good uh, consequences of Islamic revolution really is, was that the, they opened the doors of Jose and our seminaries to philosophy. Uh, it's because of the interest of uh, Ayatollah Khomeini and others uh, 
in, in philosophy. And in th that was uh, one of the uh, good points of uh, Islamic revolution, really. This, this. And uh, about the, the second question, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are lots of translations about many different philosophical thoughts in the uh, book, book stores in Iran. And uh, everybody that read a book and think that it's, it's good to, to translate that she or he translate that book. So uh, yeah, you are right that uh, by reading Farsi books, nobody can reach in a good career in philosophy. And nobody can find uh, a good answer in philosophical questions because the, the propagation of uh, different ideas in philosophy that has been translated. So uh, there is no way for scholar in philosophy in Iran to very well know English, can read and write in English. There is no way for, it, for that. Thank you very much for questions. Thank you. Can, can I just ask, uh, well, can I just add one point to your first response? Yes. Um, I mean, it seems to me, again, I'm, I'm not a, you know, Ibn Hose, um, but um, it seems that there is a big difference between the general Hose and the specific um, kind of research institutes like the Moses Imam Khomeini and the various Pazrushkas, which I think are, are, you're right, they're far more serious. But if you talk about the general classes in the Jose when they study philosophy, et cetera, Mansur is absolutely right. It's, it's pretty, um, you know, divorced from a proper, what we would call a proper scientific way of looking at the world. Uh, but we'll come back to this question of what do we mean by a proper scientific world later with my question at the end. Um, you are right. You are right. Yeah. Um, the next question, I, ha I have uh, Reza Akbari on my list. Um, Reza, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, hello everyone. And I am very glad to meet Professor Azadegan for the third or maybe fourth time during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I do know that he's working hard to lead the department to higher and more efficient level in this atmosphere of academic atmosphere of Iran. And I am very glad to meet him again here virtually. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, I am wondering if there is any program for expanding the activities of the department nationally and internationally, because all of us know that uh, Sharif University is a very high respected university in Iran and uh, a very well-known university uh, all over the world. So it's a very good basis for the university and the department to expand its activities, especially in uh, some other disciplines like education, economy, astronomy, and some other uh, disciplines that I think now they are missing in the department and uh, there are good opportunities for the department to deal with them. And second, uh, I, I'm wondering what the department do for the background weakness of uh, uh, philosophical knowledge of the students, as you mentioned. Uh, do you have any plan for uh, solving this problem or not? Thank you very much. And thank you for your um, very good lecture and uh, very good points that you shared with us. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Akbari, uh, my good friend and uh, colleague. Um, thank you for your question also. Uh, for expansion, uh, we have a program for, expand, for expansion in uh, uh, coming three years. Uh, as you know, we have only one group, philosophy, philosophy, philosophy of science group, but we want to establish two other groups in next three years. The, the, group of science and religion, and the group of uh, ethics of engineering and science. Uh, we, we are going to uh, invite um, professors and, and our P 
PhD graduates in, in Iran and elsewhere to absorb the entry of the department in these two um, branches, uh, mainly science and religion and ethics. And uh, about the background, we uh, we have problem because uh, really we have problem because we have only two year master program uh, and uh, in, during this uh, really we cannot teach enough philosophical background and uh, uh, knowledge to our students. Uh, it depends on them to pursue themselves, but only we can give them some uh, general points and some uh, good signs to find their way. This is only, only we can do this. Uh, and uh, internationally, we also uh, are establishing a master program, joint master program with uh, University of St. Petersburg in Russia. Uh, they have, we didn't know, but uh, during these years, uh, we, to some extent, <laughs> applied to go to, towards Russia. Um, and uh, we found that they, they have a very good faculty over there in, uh, and uh, the faculty in St. Petersburg have more than 100 professors, philosophy professors there. And uh, we, we are going to establish from next coming year a joint program, joint master program with them. It is another program for expansion. Thank you for your question. I think it would also be good um, if you thought about partnerships across, you know, what is known as the global south, you know, because we always um, privilege, you know, American universities, British universities. As you know, I, I unfortunately, we can't do anything uh, with you because of sanctions. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, and this is true of the Americans and other places. But you know, there are wonderful universities in South Africa, uh, in India, et cetera. And, and sometimes we need to think creatively about these sorts yeah. of connections, which are interesting because in some of these contexts, there will also be people who will want to bring their cultural heritage to bear on the, the nature of their inquiry. Yeah, exactly. In, in this situation that we are now, with the, the, there is no way to uh, find and but, but um, <laughs> somebody in Iran say that uh, sanctions have some good points. Perhaps <laughs> this, this is a good point that, that we find some new friends in, in Russia, in India, and elsewhere. Yeah. Um, I think uh, uh, Musa Mohammedian has a question. Uh, I do. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, again, thank you, Sajad Mohsen. Uh, and I, I was always actually wanting to uh, to meet Ibrahim. It was it's the first time. Thank you, Sajad and Mohsen, for for providing this opportunity. Uh, some of actually of their students applied for our PhD program in history and philosophy of science at Notre Dame, and some of them actually are made they were making a very good cases of themselves but again i mean at least one of them who got accepted in the phd program could not get here for the visa problems and all the stupidity that is going on in the united i mean us is lost in this case of course uh, but uh, i'm very happy to uh, see you ibrahim and talk to you uh, I, I actually have uh, one um, one comment and one question so one comment that I wanted to make is that, you know, I kind of um, first, I mean, uh, coming, I mean, talking about engineer, lost engineers. I mean, here is another one that went to engineering school, decided that doesn't like it. So moved to philosophy and like continued in philosophy. Uh, and this is somehow comes, I mean, it's kind of stems in like the stupid uh, educational system in Iran that divides the students in high school to physics, mathematics, sciences, and so on and so forth. So when Ibrahim actually says that um, instead of being a department for philosophy of science, we kind of transformed to a department of philosophy for scientists, 
even though it's not a good thing because a graduate department in philosophy of science should does what graduate programs in philosophy of science does in me which is like active engagement in uh, producing like top-notch researches uh, i kind of appreciate what they are doing because yeah there are so many lost philosophers i mean i personally never went to their program but i kind of get it this is a kind of sacrifice that they are making in order to provide some resources for lost people like me to maybe like be able to continue something because if they only focus on philosophy of science i mean who knows maybe someone who is not who, who really likes philosophy but not that much in philosophy of science direction now if they if he or she goes to their department probably she can pursue her career in kant for instance because gets some um, interesting uh, courses there uh, but i also have a kind of question for Ibrahim and that the question is about I mean any way I mean whatever we do your program actually is a graduate program in the philosophy of science one thing first of all that is lacking is history of science I mean we do not have any graduate program of philosophy of science alone in the United States at least to the best of my knowledge it is always history and philosophy of science my our program at Notre Dame is history and philosophy of science. Bloomington program is history and philosophy of science. Pittsburgh is history and philosophy of science. Toronto the same. So uh, this I lack of I mean oh, I, I, I will finish that. This lack of attention to the history. What 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 is your plan for actually bringing back history history of science into your program, which is very. Uh, important and essential for good knowledge of philosophy of science. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much for your comment and question. Um, we, we have a course. We have a uh, course that every student that comes to our department um, has to pass about uh, history of philosophy, uh, history of science. Uh, this is the uh, obligatory course uh, and so uh, and we invite for example uh, dr uh, masumi hamedani perhaps you know him uh, he's very famous in in last year to teach this uh, uh, course this is the, the the course that every student that come to our department uh, has to pass uh, but uh, uh, we have a very good history of science department in, in University of Tehran. And uh, if they want to focus on philosophy and history of science, uh, as I know that Masumi Hamidani and their uh, colleague has established that department in uh, University of Tehran. And uh, we um, encourage our students, if they want to pursue their studies in history of science, to go uh, over there and they are free to have, uh, for example, uh, uh, their supervisor for their classes from the uh, University of Tehran in this field. We encourage them to have connection with uh, their, that department. But uh, you know, we, we lack uh, to some extent uh, some focus on the history of science. I know that this, this is one of our uh, problems here. The only department in Iran which is named History and Philosophy of Science is History of the Science. Institute. History of Science. I, I mean, uh, History of Science in the University of Tehran, yeah. but History and Philosophy of Science, that there is a department, like department or group in History of Philosophy of, Philosophy of Science in the Iranian Institute of Philosophy. Uh, there, there are both philosophers of science and historians of science, and so there is, but, but I think that uh, that department is, or, or the people in that department are working uh, more in terms of history of philosophy, history of science than in terms of philosophy of science, as, yeah. uh, as far as I'm, I remember. Yeah, I, I, I accept your comment. You, you are right. We, it, it, uh, this is one of our uh, problems in our department. We, we should more focus on uh, the history of science. I, I understand. I accept. 
And actually, when I was a grad student um, at Cambridge, um, of course, history and philosophy of science is where all the people who are not modern philosophers go. So if you're working on anything on pre-modern philosophy, the philosophy department doesn't want to know you. And so you have to go to HPS. So if you're working on Aquinas or Boethius or Ibn Sina or whatever, you basically go to HPS and um, people like John Marin Bonn are usually very welcoming uh, in that context. Um, we have one uh, question from um, uh, Mohan Reza Moini, and then I'll ask my question. Hi. Uh, first of all, I have to thank uh, Sajjad and Mohsen for hosting this great talk, and a special thanks to Professor Ibrahim Azadegan for his informative talk. Uh, I have a question. My question is somehow uh, comes after the question of uh, Dr. Akhberi. Uh, Dr. Akhberi asked you about uh, what you do to uh, uh, to uh, somehow uh, the lack of philosophical uh, uh, background for your, for your students, what you do for that. Uh, and I want to ask you another question. Uh, there is a, a hypothesis, a thesis, maybe uh, Mohsen Feizbach agrees with me on that, that when uh, the uh, students studied engineering and sciences come to study humanity, they bring with themselves a paradigm, a mindset uh, that prevents them from being a good philosopher or being a good humanities uh, scholar. Uh, have you ever sensed that problem with your students? I know that most of the uh, students entering your program, your graduate program, came from, come from uh, uh, engineering or a, a scientific background, most of them, as far as I know. Uh, do you have, uh, have you ever sensed that problem with your students? And if you have ever sensed that, what's your uh, solution for that problem? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, of course we have sensed, and my, my, myself and uh, uh, also have this sense. Uh, you know, uh, for example, electrical engineering or physics, have very difficult courses in uh, their uh, BS degree or MS degree. Uh, as you know, I have BS degree in electrical engineering and MS degree in nuclear physics. So uh, after I changed my career to uh, philosophy, uh, first of all, uh, before engaging deeply in philosophy cartel, uh, I, I uh, thought that uh, it is more, more easier than uh, physical problems and uh, engineering problems. And uh, I, I know that this uh, idea happened for our students, that they, 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 think, they think that uh, it is some easier branch for study. But um, our solution for, <laughs> to show that, them that it is not, not also, it, is not easier, but very, very more difficult than uh, studying physics and uh, and engineering. Uh, to show them uh, and to uh, to some extent the down their attitude, uh, we in, in in the first term they come, <laughs> we um, engage them with some difficult courses in philosophy. Uh, in, in, for example, uh, in metaphysics and epistemology, uh, they, they have to pass these courses to engage uh, deeply and uh, really with philosophical problems and to understand that uh, this branch of the study is very, very difficult. And you, they have mm, lots of books to study. Maybe as former engineers, we are not eligible to talk about this topic because we are bringing our paradigm, as Mohammed Reza says. Mohammed Reza is also a convert. He, he was studying civil engineering, as far as I remember. <laughs> Maybe we're not eligible to talk about this because we are bringing our, our, uh, our paradigm with, with ourselves to the humanities. <laughs> 
but you know, th this is kind of indicative of the problem of, um, uh, I guess, a, a kind of a modern mindset which makes a very sharp cultural distinction between science and humanities. And it actually kind of brings me to my question, which is, um, and I'm sure Matt, who I think is on this call as well, would probably agree with me, that um, part of it is a, a rather restricted and impoverished sense of what science is, um, which has in many ways been part of the history of the, of the West since the scientific revolution, right? So science becomes tied to a particularly narrow type of investigation and a particular method. Whereas, of course, for the ancients, you know, we go back to Aristotle, etc. Science is everything. You know, science, science, philosophy are basically almost identical concepts. It's the pursuit of knowledge, and so uh, notions around metaphysics, for example, remain very much central to um, uh, to uh, science. And in fact, one wonders often that um, physicists, in particular, always like smuggling metaphysics in, despite the fact that you know uh, they're not supposed to but those who work particularly on cosmology are always bringing metaphysics into their discussions but even broader than that i mean again as i said nodding to to matt um there is a much wider sense of what the pre-modern um uh, iranian culture and others thought of science they included for example you know what we nowadays dismissively call you know so the occult sciences these things were sciences, as far as these specific people were concerned. Um, even for someone like Ibn Sina, okay, he has some issues with astrology, but he doesn't have any issue with the, the notion of the, the higher um, celestial spheres having an impact upon us. Um, and, uh, and, and many others, I mean, Mir Dahmad is, is a very good example of a staff good thinker who's heavily into, you know, the manipulation of the cosmos in different ways. And for them, they definitely thought they were doing science. Now, of course, if you were to raise this in a mainstream philosophy of science or history, or philosophy of science context, people would probably think you're crazy, that you want to bring the occult back into science. But at the very least, questioning and problematizing this category of science seems to be a, quite a sensible thing for us to do. So what, what is your response to that? Um, really, you, you are right, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, and I, I think that um, in, originally when we, when we think about the relation between philosophy and science, we can some uh, common roots between them. And uh, of course, uh, as you know, in, in the history of philosophy, uh, we have uh, some sort of engagement between science and, and philosophy. Um, and also, uh, the, our question in philosophy of science nowadays uh, is the question, many of them are the questions that we can find in Aristotle or also in Plato. So uh, we have to if we are engaging in, in philosophical concerns and problems of, that nowadays we have in philosophy of science, we have to um, have good knowledge on history of science and also history of philosophy. Both of them will be required to pursue our question. So the, as a, a, in our small department, we have one professor in history of science and one professor in history of philosophy uh, to teach the students both of them. Okay. Um, okay. Um, is there maybe a final question? Because I, I'm aware that we've taken much of your time. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, any, any last question? I wanted to ask maybe a last question. Who? Uh, this is Muhammad Mahdi Fallah. Yes, uh, so yeah, go ahead. Um, where is he? Yeah, I'm over here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for the time and from the presentation of uh, Dr. Azadegan. Uh, actually, I have to add my name to, to the list of the converters I, I have converted to 
from engineering to philosophy too. Uh, but uh, from uh, saying my personal experience, I think that uh, as well as for the students of engineering who study engineering, uh, the, the, the students who convert or, uh, also don't have a, a clear uh, expectation of what they are uh, going to have in philosophy because uh, for myself, when, uh, when I was actually uh, departing from uh, engineering, I thought that we will have something uh, very special and ideal in philosophy. But uh, actually, when you go in it and you somehow dive in the philosophy, you think that you are not having what you are expecting. And uh, I know many of students who actually converted, but they are not, not very happy of what they have uh, got in the philosophy. Uh, another question, I, I, I will make it short. Uh, I know that you are actually, uh, you're the Department of Philosophy in Sharif is the philosophy for uh, scientists. But I, actually, I wanted to know that is there any limitation for uh, your uh, projects? Because I know students in your department who are somehow working on something like philosophy of religion and uh, somehow are focusing on its relation to Hegel and something like that, but I cannot actually uh, uh, define it for myself that how can we relate this topic to philosophy of science? How can you uh, explain that? Uh, is there any li limitation that confines your projects or you are actually open for any projects who comes to you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, is studying philosophy uh, satisfy your big question? Uh, really, for, for me, myself, to some extent. Uh, I, at least, in, um, for example, have questions about nature of God. Uh, and uh, when I read lots of papers and books about that topic, uh, I found that uh, I found some some sort of sympathy or or empathy with others that the, 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 uh, there are lots of people that have the same pain as me. So uh, in this regard, philosophy is satisfying to some extent. But uh, if you want to, to find a concrete answer about your questions, I can. I, you know that you cannot find it in philosophy. Perhaps you can find it in, in religion or in faith and, or in, uh, in other areas. If you want to, to, to reach to certainty, you cannot come to philosophy. Philosophy is the realm of doubts and uh, thinking. Uh, about your question, there you, really our, our students are free to choose every area in, in philosophy that they want. We normally do not uh, ban them. If, but uh, we have a committee to accept uh, our students' uh, projects. And uh, I, I, uh, I don't remember any project that we reject if they want to pursue. I, I really don't remember. Whatever they want, they can, they can do in their project. If it concerns some philosophical question. Thank you. I think um, we Thank should you. bring this to a close. What do you think, Mohsin? Um, have you got anything to add or shall we? Yeah? yeah. I, I, I have no, uh, nothing to say and I, I just thank you. Uh, Sajjad and thank you Mohsen and other uh, participants that uh, 